Welcome to Attleboro Update. With great local man in need of a kidney receives the gift of life. Festivities for the Big Read are in full swing, and partner organization Triborough Youth Theater showed that Attle. Welcome to Attleboro Update, where you can get the latest in what's going on in the Attleboro community. You can watch all of our content by visiting our website, doubleacs.com, by downloading the AACS mobile app, or if you have a Roku, you can search for the AACS Roku channel. Congressman Jake Auchincloss and Attleboro State Representative Jim Hawkins were at the South Attleboro Commuter Rail Station Friday afternoon with a message urging the MBTA to reprioritize funding for the station's renovation. The station has been closed since February 20. 2021 due to safety concerns. Priority shifted away from the project during the pandemic due to low ridership. Both Congressman Auchincloss and Representative Hawkins spoke with AACS. Last fall, Congress approved a generational investment in our nation's infrastructure, more than a trillion dollars for fixing roads and bridges, improving public transit, guaranteeing clean water, and making our electric grid more resilient. Sending almost $9 billion to Massachusetts to help us lay the foundation for a strong economy in the 2020s and the South Attleboro commuter rail station is exactly the kind of project we had in mind for this funding the South Attleboro commuter rail station is a critically important transportation juncture for economic development for housing and for connecting Attleboro residents to jobs and services we've been working on this for several years the station was neglected for decades is the reason that it was closed there was a, a beam that was found structurally structurally cracked in the the overpass and they had to close the station. Uh, but in the meantime, the development around this station, 350 units of housing up the street, commercial development, has all been based on having the station here. So we're urging MBTA to make this a priority for their funding. Uh, the design is, is nearly 100% complete. The design includes a glass enclosed overpass, three elevators, full-length high-rise platforms, tying in Rhode Island Regional Transit with Massachusetts Regional Transit and commuter rail, solving all the traffic issues here is all part of the plan, but they do need to fund this. Uh, the report came out last week, the CIP report. The plan hasn't been released. It's near 100%, but it's not released. And our concern is that if this delays funding by a year and construction by another two years, that's too long to go without this station. It was only closed because of neglect is the only reason. And it's affecting the area around here in a very difficult, very detrimental way. Constituents have been putting up with this for a long time. A lot of constituents would not use this station because you can see through the stairs to the ground below. A lot of people would not use this. And it's, people have bought houses near there, near here, so they could walk to the station and now all of a sudden they're high and dry. There's a 350 unit housing development going in up the street. People are counting on being able to walk here or take the shuttle bus here. So the, yes, I absolutely have heard a lot from constituents. They're very eager to see this progress. And I'll add to that, the governor has made it a hallmark of his administration to compel more housing production in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Over the last 15 years in the greater Boston area, Massachusetts has created something like two and a half jobs for every one unit of housing, and that's led to a massive supply-demand imbalance with housing and led to higher prices. The governor, through the Housing Choice Act uh, and through investments in transportation, is trying to uh, persuade and at times compel municipalities to build more housing near transportation hubs. Attleboro is doing that. Attleboro really has taken the initiative to uh, zone for more housing production near its key commuter rail stops. Uh, but it needs, of course, the improved commuter rail to continue that, that good trend. They have, there's, been bidding, there's been bidding wars on houses in Attleboro. This house is going up in every postage stamp lot in the area. There's high-rise apartments downtown. There's 350 units going in just up the street from here. The people have moved out of Boston expecting to be able to commute, and the station is closed. This is horrible timing. Right now, the funding for the next five years is being decided, so I'm going to urge people to please send in your comments if this is a station that you use and this is affects you. The email address is cipengagement at mbta.com. And if you'd be willing, because I want to keep track of this, cc me also at james.hawkins at mahouse.gov. The Attleboro Recreation Department is getting ready for their summer programs. We spoke with Recreation Director Dennis Walsh to learn more. We're looking forward to an exciting summer coming up in 2022 after uh, two years of many restrictions from COVID. It looks like uh, we're going into a summer where there won't be so many restrictions and we'll be able to offer some, some of the programs that we were uh, prior to the pandemic 
coming upon us. So for folks who are looking for some childcare during the summer, we do have our all-day program here at the Bartek Recreation Center, formerly known as the Armory here on Pine Street. This program is an eight-week program. It'll start on Monday, June 27th, and it will run through Friday, August 19th. It is a low-cost uh, program. It's $170 a week with discounts for a, a second child. We run from 8 o'clock until 5, and we'll have a limit of 30 children here at the program this summer. They come here where they do uh, many things, recreational type things in the gymnasium. Uh, we have a computer lab. Uh, we go over to the Briggs Pool twice a day, once in the morning and then once again in the afternoon. And uh, this year we're going to bring back some field trips, not every week, uh, but we hope to have three to four field trips this summer. We do things such as uh, we've gone to the North Attleboro Kids Day, the movies, uh, bowling, etc. So we, we hope to have uh, field trips back again this summer as well in the all-day program. We have a number of free programs for Attleboro families this summer. One is our arts and crafts program, which is a traveling program, so it's at a different location each day of the week. Uh, you can look at our brochure online to see where they are. That will start again on uh, the first Monday of our programs, June 27th, and we'll go through Friday, August 19th. It's at different locations. Uh, we'll have the Kids Summer Cafe, which is a free lunch program. We'll be at two locations this summer, over here at the Briggs Playground in the east side, and also at the Balfour Riverwalk, which is behind uh, the library on North Main Street. We'd like to thank our friends at the Attleboro Interfaith Collaborative who run this program for us and uh, great service for the children of Attleboro. Another exciting thing for the summer of 22 is that we will be opening three pools again this summer. That's our plan. Uh, pr previous two years, we've only been able to open two pools due to the pandemic. Uh, the only potential apply in this ointment is if we don't hire enough lifeguards. We're working hard to hire lifeguards already. We've been working on it since the pools closed last summer, and we feel confident we'll have a sufficient number of lifeguards to open all three pools. Pools would be opening on Wednesday, July 29th, and they would be open through Friday, August 19th. The three pools here in the city of Attleboro, two of which we own and one we operate for the state. There's the Spatcher Pool on North Avenue. That's a state-owned pool that we operate for DCR. We also have the Briggs Pool here in the east side of Attleboro on East Street. And then the third pool, which will be open again this summer that has not been open the last two years, is the Twin Village Pool on South Main Street, which most folks call the Dodgeville section of town. Twin Village Pool and the Briggs Pool will be restricted to Attleboro residents. A day pass will be $3 for those two pools and $40 for a season's pass. The state pool, since it is owned by the state, we have to treat everyone in the state the same way. So uh, that pool will be $5 per person and state residents can also purchase season's passes for $40. We're excited to once again bring back swim lessons, which we haven't had the past two summers. We will be having swim lessons. Uh, they will be at the Spatcher Pool this summer, and uh, we'll have two sessions of the swim lessons. Uh, one is, uh, starts on July 11th, and then the second one on August 1st. Most of the information, though, is online, so if folks uh, want to get ahead of the curve on summer programs, you can go online uh, to our website. Best just to go to the city of Attleboro.us and then under departments look for recreation. Also, you can call the office and speak to myself or program coordinator Tim Killian. And our number here is 774 203 1889. For the second year, the Attleboro Public Library and the Relay for Life of Greater Attleboro are putting on their Slam Cancer Poetry Essay event to raise awareness about the disease. They've put out a call for poetry or essays of up to 500 words that reflect on the impact of cancer. A culminating event will be held at the Balfour Riverwalk Park, where artists will have an opportunity to read their work. We spoke with a representative of Relay for Life, Larry Kessler, to learn more. My name is Larry Kessler, and I am a member of the uh, Relay for Life of Greater Arbor Volunteer Planning Committee. We've been excited about doing two events this year. We're going to have our uh, regular relay in June, uh, June 17th, 18th at Norton High School. Uh, and then also based on our uh, enthusiastic response to last year's first slam cancer event, we're uh, doing that. We started it this month and uh, this year we're hoping to repeat that. We invited people to uh, share their poems or essays of uh, up to 500 words on how cancer has affected them or which could be a, a personal battle with cancer. It could be helping, uh, being a, a caregiver to someone else. It could be volunteering. It's in partnership with the Attleboro Public Library for the second time. The library, uh, Amy, Amy Rillager of the, uh, the library has been uh, enthusiastically backing that. 
And uh, the submissions period has started uh, April 1st and it lasts all uh, the month of uh, April. We chose April because it corresponds with National Poetry Month. Those who want to uh, submit a sample of poetry or an original work of poetry or uh, an essay, the email is, uh, it's all one word, slamcancer21 at gmail.com. We are planning to invite people who uh, submitted their, their works to, again, read their works. And this is going to happen on uh, Friday, May 20th in the evening, uh, starting about 6 o'clock uh, at Balfour Riverwalk Park next to the uh, next to the Arbor Library. Um, and we had a nice turnout last year. And uh, we're hoping to uh, invite some of the people back from, from, from last year, too, if, they're, if they want to come. And it's open to the, to the public. The, the writers themselves will, will get a special invitation, but the public is more than welcome to, uh, to uh, come. And we're also going to uh, have some more information about our upcoming, the, the main relay in June that we're going to share uh, more for the people who are, are interested in, in joining us in June. We really would uh, make a pitch for people to get involved uh, for either or both events, the Slam Cancer and, and then the regular relay, which will, by the way, go from 6 o'clock on uh, June 17th until about 10, 1030 on June 18th, because this year we're able to, to bring back a full event. Those teams who want to can, can stay over. Other people will, will be able to come and go during that time. It's always been important to raise money for to fight cancer, but it's especially important now because uh, the pandemic, a lot of people put off their routine sc uh, screenings and routine tests that would have found a number of cancers. Um, and there's still some hesitancy uh, from what we're hearing uh, because of the, the recent surge in COVID, which thank goodness has gone down, but there's still some hesitancy for people to get tested and get screened and get the, the routine test, which can detect the cancer if it's there at an early stage and, and oftentimes will be able to be, to be cured. Unfortunately, the Cancer Society said what they found out during the, the first year of the pandemic is that uh, there were uh, thousands and thousands of cases where people uh, because they neglected to get tested, when they finally did, the cancer was well advanced. So we really, we urge people to get involved uh, to, to raise awareness about the need for screenings, for getting tested, and, and, and for raising money to fight this disease. You can follow the website. We'll tell you how to, how to get involved and become a, a volunteer. Uh, it's not too late to form your own team, uh, to be a member of, of an existing team. You can see the, that website will have all of our teams, we have, I think, close to 25 teams who have raised about over 21,000 so far, over 80, uh, I think, participants. Um, you don't have to register for the uh, May event. You just, you just have to come on May 20th, or we hope that you can submit a, a work to that email that I, I had uh, given. And uh, we just hope to get people involved and get people thinking about cancer, raise awareness about cancer, which affects people in uh throughout all age groups. Capon Park Zoo is getting ready for the summer months. They plan on holding a number of programs and they are also offering volunteer opportunities for teens. We spoke with Curator of Education, Melanie Fernandez, to learn more. Hi, it's Melanie Fernandez, Curator of Education at Capron Park Zoo. And even though I'm dressed warm today, because it is still March, summer is coming up quickly. And this summer, thankfully, with most restrictions being lifted, we're able to offer our summer outdoor adventure programs for children. And we also have our zoo crew program for teenagers. Now the summer outdoor adventures program is a day camp style program for children ages five to 12. You can find all the information on that program at the zoo's website, capronparkzoo.com. Click the link that's right on the front page. If you have a teenager who is interested in volunteering at the zoo, you can also take a look on the web page and go to the volunteer section and you will see a link for Zoo Crew. Zoo Crew are our teen volunteers who assist education with our programming and interacting with visitors all summer long. So in order to be Zoo Crew, a child has to be at least 13 years of age and they have to go through the application process, which is submitting an application along with letters of recommendations from teachers or coaches or clergy. Uh, you can find all that information right on the zoo's website. We do have space available in that program, which is very rare. So if you do have a kid that's interested in volunteering at the zoo, 
that would be a great program to get them involved in. Now our Zoo Crew program is one of those programs where uh, kids sort of become invested in the zoo and, and they keep coming back for years. I've had Zoo Crew that started as campers here when they were five and six years old and one of the ones that I'm thinking of, he was a teenager, he started with Zoo Crew without going through our camp programs and he just uh, started a new position at Denver Zoo as a zookeeper. We just had another one of our keepers who worked at the zoo for several years and moved on to another position elsewhere. But he started as a camper here and went through Zoo Crew. Uh, so Zoo Crew is a really great place for kids to kind of find out whether being in a zoo culture is what they would like to do for the rest of their lives. And even if it's not, it's a great place for them to make friends that can uh, help to support them in what choices they do make. I have kids that are now married with children who bring their kids to the zoo now too that were once in our zoo crew program. So it's a really strong program for children in their teens who may have challenges at school, they may have social challenges, and it's a, it's a great way for them to build skills, to build not just uh, social skills, but public outreach skills, community interaction skills and public speaking skills. It helps them gain confidence in order to, for interviews for uh, paying jobs when they get a little bit older. And it has even helped them get into schools because of course volunteer experience looks good on a resume for school, but it also gives them a place to sort of make some accomplishments that allow them to shine and gives them just another tool in their toolkit for college applications. We are starting to warm up and uh, everyone love to see more people coming out to the zoo. Our rainforest unfortunately is still closed because of the avian flu. However, as soon as the weather starts to warm up and dry out, we'll be able to hopefully open it again for the summer. Um, but there's still other exhibits to take a look at. So come on down to the zoo. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Attleboro High School's career and technical education programming has expanded over the last several years and it continues to grow. CTE Director Jeremy Gay gave us an update on the program. It's been an exciting time here the last couple of years. Uh, just a few years ago we were running 12 uh, CTE programs and we're currently running 15. Uh, we added radio and television broadcasting, marketing, and robotics and automation. Uh, this fall we're slated to open HVAC and dental assisting. And a year from now, we'll be opening cosmetology. So we're going from 12 programs to a total of 18 in just a couple of years. There is a renewed focus with CT, and it's, uh, there's a lot of research that shows that students who participate in CT have uh, better attendance rates, uh, fewer discipline referrals, and they have better completion rates for two- and four-year institutions when they go to college. And they also perform better on all forms of standardized testing from MCAS to uh, AP and SAT exams. Uh, we see the, uh, the benefit of offering all these CT programs to our students in a comprehensive setting. So when the students are here taking CT programming that is, you know, equivalent to any vocational, regional vocational school that's out there, but they also can take advanced placement courses, they can take a foreign language class, they can join uh, clubs and organizations, and there's a complete catalog of sports that these students can participate in that may not always be available at the other schools. So Attleboro has one-stop shop. We're doing it right. So there are some other schools that students can attend from Attleboro that have some sort of CTE programming, and uh, you know, and that's a that's on a case-by-case -case basis. But uh, our hope is is that with the with, with the rigor and relevance of our programs here and all the other offerings that we have, that students will choose to stay here in Attleboro. Like I said, it's a very exciting time right now here in Attleboro. We're getting ready to move into our new facility. Uh, with that new facility comes a new schedule where we're going to be able to really um, concentrate CTE with our students. And that means that they're going to get the 900 hour required hours that the, uh, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education requires. And many of our programs are going to be well above that 900 hour mark. So therefore, what's going to happen is you're going to see students that are well prepared ready to join the workforce, ready to, to uh, participate in post-secondary education. It's truly a win-win. A number of Attleboro High School students won medals at a district-level Skills USA competition. Skills USA is a career and technical organization that works with schools across the country. We spoke with Attleboro High School principal Bill Rooney and several of the students. I'm Bill Rooney, principal of Attleboro High School, and uh, we're celebrating the outstanding success 
of our uh, Skills USA group in the uh, district level competition. I've been here for 10 years and Skills has been a part of the offerings at Attleboro High School for that entire time, but I will have to say the productivity and the interest in the last two and a half, three years has been a dramatic improvement. Mr. Rugg and Ms. Kirsch have come along under the leadership of Mr. Gay and uh, we've got some phenomenal students that are participating and we're seeing a lot of great results. Hi, my name is Samantha Fergalt. I'm in 11th grade at Attleboro High School and I am the president of the Skills USA chapter here at the high school. Some of the things that Skills USA has done for us is made it um, fun for kids to get involved in some of our CTE programs. Um, it's kind of made it like a little competition between um, some of like the people in each of the different shops as well as individually like seeing how well you know things about your trade. It's also really cool to interact with people from the different shops as well. I know a lot of them already know each other but it's also really cool to introduce them to your own shop as well as being introduced to something you might not know about. In the welding shop where I do my trade, we're doing a Willet Garden opening scene. In medical, they're doing like a lot of like different projects with the human body, how to take blood pressures. In carpentry, they're making sheds for the community based on orders and blueprints. Sometimes in like my normal classes, I get a little bored. So coming into like a trade class, it's really interactive. One of my favorite things to do is to make metal roses. Um, so it's using different kind of techniques. I work very closely with Mr. Rugg, Ms. Kirsch, Mr. Brillen, and Mr. Gay. They're all super sweet, and they've all got something different to say about things. My name's Corey Rugg. I'm one of the co-advisors for our chapter here at Attleboro High School. I also teach robotics and automation. The fulfillment you get from seeing these guys grow and learn and become good at their trade, learning it, being able to do it, and then when they move on, after high school into jobs and you hear back from them about how successful they're being or what they're doing now in their lives. It's very fulfilling. My name is Tammy Kirsch. I'm the other co-advisor for Skills USA and I'm also a medical assisting instructor here at Attleboro High School. The medical assisting program, we're in the middle of kind of revamping the program a little bit so that our students will actually get a certification in medical assisting when they graduate from high school. Most of my students are going on to college. When they get there, they're going to have a little bit of a lead on other students who didn't take a program like this because they'll already have learned things like medical terminology, anatomy and physiology. A lot of the skills that we do, like an EKG for example, which is a cardiac test, we do our junior year in high school. In nursing school, um, they don't get to do that until their junior year in college. So our students graduate already having skills like that. Hi, my name is Emily Forbes. Uh, I'm a chapter member of Skills USA. I'm in the 10th grade. I'm a sophomore at Attleboro High School, and I chose to go into the medical route of things. So for Skills USA, we have a lot of options. The main ones were health knowledgeable, medical math. There was also medical terminology. So you would take these tests and you would see what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, how are these teams going to form, how are they going to interact, and then we would choose what we felt most comfortable with and what we were good at. And we had a lot of sophomores place, we had a lot of sophomores medal. My team medaled bronze, my friend Paige's team medaled in gold. Being able to work with your friends and win something together, it's a really big achievement. I had a really bad allergic reaction when I was about 12 years old and I couldn't eat or talk or walk for three months and I was in Hasbro and all of the nurses and doctors there they really put everything that they could just for me and I probably would have died without them so it was a really life-changing experience and I want to pay that back. That's all for this week's edition of Attleboro Update. From everyone here at AACS, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.